Before we look at this, it's always really important that we bridge new knowledge from old knowledge, right? So before we get into the, like, the nuts and bolts of dividing fractions, I want us to quickly think about dividing whole numbers, because we've been doing that for ages, okay? So write with me, right? Consider, let's do say, well, let's have a look at this one that happened over here. Let's go 15 divided by 3. 15 divided by 3, of course, is? How many 3s go in? 5. 5 is in, right? So that's true. Okay? So when we're asking 15 divided by 3 and saying 5, what this means is 3, I can fit 5 of them in here. Does that make sense? So let's just jot that down, right? This means that I can fit five lots of three into 15, right? Five lots of three into 15. Okay, so we know how this works. If I had 15 things, <coughs> uh, this is five, right? So I'm going to divide. Yeah. I've got 15 boxes here now, right? How many times can I break it up into three? And I can do it one, two, three, four, five times. We have the answer. So I'm going to take this idea now and think about what happens if I bring a fraction into play, right? So now let's think about, hmm, let's do a simpler number. Let's go with three divided by a oh, half. Now, I know some of you know the answer. You can just jump right in. That's great, but I want you to pause first and think about how it fits together with this. 15 divided by 3 is 5. That is how many 3s I can fit in here. So what is this question asking? How could we verbalize it? Yeah, Abby. How many halves can I fit? Perfect. Let's all write that down, right? What this means is, this means, how many halves go into 3? Okay? Now, just like before, we drew some diagrams to help us, right? I know this is a very simple example, but that's why it'll be helpful for us to draw like the harder examples later. I'd like us to draw three boxes, each one, just like these guys, each one representing one unit. Okay? So if I've got uh, one, two, three, right? So here are my one, two, three units. This whole set of boxes stands for three. The question is, how many halves can I get out of this, right? So if it's like, it's, you know, you've got three Kit Kats that you want to share with your friend, and you think, okay, I want at least half a Kit Kat. Like, you know, I'd really like a full Kit Kat, but if I get at least half, I'll be happy. So you break every single one, yeah? So let's draw our breaks there. By the way, you know, has anyone ever broken a bone? Anyone broken a bone before? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so people have broken a bone. When we say, oh, I've got a, a break in my bone, we have a very special word that is usually associated with that. Right? We call it a fracture, right? A fracture because it means break. Fracture means break, which is exactly where this word comes from. You guys know my obsession with names of things, right? Fraction literally means when you take some whole things and you break them into pieces, into smaller bits. So you guys can tell me how many fractions, how many components have I got? Here, can you count them? Six. Six, right? And let's, let's number them just so we can see what's going on. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's how many halves there are in three. Oops, wrong color. Okay. Three divided by a half is six. That's how many halves I can get in there. Now, I hope you can see. Yeah, there you go. Yes, you may. Just go around that one. I hope you can see, um, just by doing that, like breaking, right? 3 divided by a half is actually the same as, look, I get how many pieces out of each whole Kit Kat? I'm getting two pieces, right? Two here, two here, two here. So what I've done is the same as saying 3 times 2. You notice that, right? It's a very simple product to do. 3 times 2 and 3 divided by a half they're actually the same thing. You notice that, okay? Let's, does this pattern always work? Let's think about this, okay? Um, one more. This was example one. Let's write it here. Example two. Let's do one last example. Example three, and then we can come up with a summary of all. Okay. Hmm. Let's think about something like say, I'm going to do a tricky one. 
4 divided by... Mm, how many do I Yeah, I'm going to do 3 thirds. That's okay, this is trickier. This is trickier, yeah? Again, we're going to use a picture to help us and then see if we can come up with a rule for this, okay? Four, let's draw our four blocks, okay? So we've got our picture happening. One here. Okay. Now, there are my four blocks, and I'm trying to say how many two-thirds, like that's the size of the, the block I'm interested in, how many of those can I fit into that four? Now, just pause for a second. Before we start to do this, I want you to make a prediction. How many do you think we can do? Don't say it out. Just think about it. If you were like, oh, this is how many. Everyone wants two-thirds of a Kit Kat. This is how many we've got. Hmm. Think about it. Okay. Let's start to break these things up. Let's try to um, fracture these Kit Kats and see what comes. What, um, what division should I do for each of my Kit Kats? How much should I divide them up into? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do thirds for each one, right? If I, um, and you can do this with me, if I break each one into thirds, like so. Third, third, thirds. Okay. How many times can I get two thirds out of all of my broken pieces? Okay. Some of them are easy to count, aren't they? You going to give me an answer? Yeah. Okay, before you give me an answer, let's, let's go through the process, right? Um, maybe you want to do some circles, right? So I can see right there. There's a two thirds, I'm going to call that one. I can see if I go to the next Kit Kat, I can't get one out of here, but if I go to the next one, there's my second one. But now look, after I've broken off those two blocks of two thirds, can you see down the bottom, if I put these guys together, there's a third one. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, so I can complete this again. I just do the same thing for the other two, right? Here's the fourth one. Is the fifth one, and now Brad, you can tell us we have how many in total? Six. Thank you very much. Okay, so four divided by two thirds also equals six. That's a coincidence. But I wonder, can we connect this back to what we just saw? Did you see this? When we did three divided by a half, it was very similar to turning the division into multiplication. And then what do we do here? A half. And two, how are they related to each other? Hmm. Two, yeah. Half to one is one. Okay, um, yeah, a half of two is just one. Another fancy way we can say that is I can write two as a fraction. I know it's a bit weird, right? But two is two over one. Do you agree with that? So two over one and one over two, this one is just like an upside down version of that guy. Do you see that? So what would it look like if I tried to do something like that this here? If I said four times, what's the upside down version of two thirds? Yeah. Four times three over two. Okay, three over two instead of two over three. You see that? Okay. Now what is four times three over two? How do I we've done some multiplying of fractions? How do I work this out? Can I've, I can think of at least two ways to do this? Someone, someone give me a suggestion. Peter. Um um so you turn the four into a fraction, so do four over one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you um, times the one by two and, and the four by two. Whoop, hold on. Four I do three. do the one by two, but what happens with the top guy? Where do they go when we're multiplying? Tops. Four and three. Yeah, so numerators multiply through, denominators multiply through. So what am I going to get as an answer oh, yeah. when, I, when I do this? What's the numerator now? But yeah, something. Sorry. Fantastic, which of course is six, right? What was another way I could have done that? Anyone suggest? Yeah, true. You can also do 4 divided by 2 is 4 times 3. Yeah, very good. So, um, I could have done this. I could have noticed, hey, I can cancel things. Remember, we like to get small numbers if we possibly can. So, if I divide these both by 2, I just end up with a 2 over there, which of course is still 6. That's reassuring, isn't it? So, can you see this division thing, right? Like, I don't really want to have to keep on drawing these diagrams, especially if you've got some big numbers and some weirdo looking fractions. So, here's my summary. When I'm dividing fractions, right? Dividing a fraction is exactly the same as multiplying by its upside down version. Do you see that? Um, two over one is upside down of one over two, and three over two is an upside down version of two over three. Now, upside down version, 
doesn't really sound all that fancy and technical in a, you know, an official mathematical essay or something like this. So we have, you know, mathematicians have devised a word for this instead of upside down version. Does anyone know what it is? It starts with an R. R. Mm. Reverse. reverse would be very, very close. Because reversing is a bit like integers, like going forwards and backwards, and that's not what we need. Reversible. I'd like us all to write down this word. I'm so glad this is going to be good. You can write it here for 2 over 1, and I'd also like you to write it here for 3 over 2. The new word I want to teach you is reciprocal. Oh, oh, reciprocal. Oh, reciprocal. Who's that before? Yeah, 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 you heard? Okay. Well, I don't have a good memory. Um, some of you may have heard this word before. A similar word is reciprocate, which is like, oh, if someone like does you a favor, you will reciprocate by kind of like you do you do them a favor, like you kind of well, whatever it is. Okay? So a reciprocal in mathematics, it's the upside down version. That's what we mean. We take this fraction and turn it upside down. A half turns into two. Two thirds turns into three over two. And you can do this same trick, which is much easier to do. These are all quite simple. With these, we really have to draw something out. 